Thank you, and uh, everybody welcome. Uh, I have quite a job to do here, curing heart disease and diabetes in a half an hour. Uh, maybe I should have done one, but these are basically could be one disease. Uh, as usual, I want to thank Dr. Klatz and Goldman for inviting me here. I've been a speaker at this meeting for, I hate to say it, close to 20 years. I know I don't seem that old, uh, but uh, without them, we would never be here. Uh, the meeting this year uh, always seems to top the last year, and indeed it was fantastic for me in listening to many of the speakers. I always find new things uh, that are fantastic for my practice, and I had a very big honor today as I walked in to give my lecture. I met two physicians in their 90s who were asking me about reversing arteriosclerosis. So they really represent what anti-aging is about. They're here, and not like other 90 or 80 year olds, not in wheelchairs, not in nursing homes, but active, intelligent guys looking to go and live a healthy and longer life. I had another beautiful thing happen to me, showing that this is really an international meeting. I met a brilliant doctor from Prague, often, often happens to be gorgeous, and uh, I was impressed uh, with our center in Prague. But anyway, let's get on to the talk. That's me. And uh, my associate, Mary Infantino, who's right here, is a brilliant nurse practitioner who is an integral part of my practice. And for, your, for those out there to facilitate your practices in anti-aging, I recommend hiring or associating with a good nurse practitioner. So is it possible to reverse heart disease and diabetes? By the way, there's no way I can do this lecture in a half hour. It's impossible. I usually have about 200 slides, and then I, I cut through them. So. Uh, it'll all be in your curriculum if you get, which I recommend getting an Instatape, uh, uh, Instatape uh, tapes. So, yes, it is. It is possible to reverse heart disease. Now, what I'm going to be talking about here today is mainly coronary atherosclerosis, and in general, atherosclerosis, peripheral vascular disease and stroke. We're not talking about today, although I will in the future, congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, valvular heart disease, and uh, uh, a arrhythmias, even though we do have protocols for all of those. So it is reversible. A New England Journal of Medicine, I didn't have time to pull out the original article, but believe me, I've been talking about this for years. 1994, Greg Brown, University of Washington, reversing coronary disease with intensive lipid lowering therapy. The first thing you can do to reverse atherosclerosis is use intensive lipid lowering therapy. Now. Uh, and, and let's get into the facts. What you want to do, and he did it. He didn't even do it with statin drugs. He did it with cholesterol, which is a bile acid sequestrant, and niacin. Also, other studies on reversing heart disease came with Dean Ornish, and he used a vegetarian diet, meditation, and uh, uh, exercise with yoga to reverse angiograph angiographically documented coronary atherosclerosis. Other studies have been done by David Blankenhorn, who's now passed, on femoral, reversing femoral arteriosclerosis, and studies have been done on reducing homocysteine and lowering carotid atherosclerosis. But the key is intensive lipid lowering. Now, if you do it with diet, if you do it with statins, if you do it with bile acid sequestrants, or if you do it with natural substances, you must get, that's key number one, you must get your LDL cholesterol down to below 70. That's taken. Take that to the bank. That's going to stop the progression and, uh, and, and reverse uh, atherosclerosis. The first thing I like to do, and I presented this about 10 years ago at this conference, and I said, I hate to say that this is like Mickey Mouse medicine, you know, when we're dealing with uh, uh, regenerative medicine and so forth. And by the way, uh, we know about regenerative medicine, we know about stem cells, we know about cell biology, we know about genetic engineering, and we know about telomeres. They're just starting to come in play. For all of us clinical guys, hey, how about preventing heart attack, stroke, fighting obesity, reversing and preventing diabetes? That's really anti-aging medicine. So these are your risk factors, and they came from Framingham, Massachusetts, uh, if you just look at this and treat these things, you're well on your way. Also, heart health prevents many other things. Good heart health prevents uh, ED, it prevents Alzheimer's disease, metabolic syndrome, and probably even cancer. I don't know why that's up there. What does that say? This Mac can't connect to iCloud. Well, I don't know about that. 
But, uh, oh, by the way, I just received another honor by our next speaker, invited to be a founding member of the new uh, uh, physiology, uh, mo physiology type of uh, uh, medical society. Uh, and I told him, well, I'm going to be speaking about the pathophysiology of arteriosclerosis. And here are the things that you must do to attack arteriosclerosis. The lipid hypotheses, okay, number one, we've already got that covered. You're going to go with intensive lipid lowering. Inflammation is a critical aspect of cardiovascular disease. Everybody should remember me uh, measuring the C-reactive protein. You should be on a non-inflammatory diet, which I'll tell you about in a little while. Of course, uh, stress reduction, as one of our previous lectures, uh, lecturers uh, mentioned, uh, and nutraceuticals, especially things like omega-3, which help with inflammation. Lower homocysteine, endothelial dysfunction is critical. Uh, last year, I spoke about uh, measuring endothelial dysfunction. I still do it in my centers with an endopat unit, and this is very critical because the endothelium is the protective lining against heart attack and stroke and serves uh, uh, to maintain what we call vasoreactivity, ve blood vessel dilatation, and it serves as a protective barrier. Oxidized LDL, we don't frequently talk about that. Uh, well, I don't know why, I guess I do. But uh, we now know that it's the, not the LDL cholesterol itself that causes accelerated atherothrombosis, which I call clogging and clotting. It is damaged to the LDL by oxidation. And that's why two of my critical nutrients for protecting the heart and protecting the LDL against oxidative damage are coenzyme Q10, resveratrol, and a lot of uh, the other antioxidants. Very, very important. And of course, glucose and insulin. And that's why uh, diabetes is really now considered to be a cardiovascular disease. Eight out of 10 diabetics die from a cardiovascular problem. And why is that? Well, I'll show you why as I get into diabetes. Right now, I'm curing heart disease. Uh, so they have a special problem. There's something called glycooxidation and ages, which maybe I'll jump into next. But they have more damage to their LDL, and a new uh, modified LDL uh, has been found, uh, a more sticky and smaller size that damages uh, the uh, LDL more. So oxidized LDL, very critical. You can measure it. In, uh, in some of your uh, fractionated lipid profiles. Glucose and insulin, diabetes is just a killer. You must know how to treat and prevent and even reverse diabetes. I'll get into that next uh, round. Uh, I don't see the time up here, by the way, so that could be bad. Uh, uh, glycation, which I'm gonna talk about in the diabetes section. High blood pressure, gotta control your blood pressure drugs, lifestyle, and so forth. The prothrombotic state, you are more prone to develop clotting. Most of this occurs with visceral adiposity, with metabolic syndrome, and diabetes. They all have this prothrombotic state, and that can be attacked with my protocol, the V protocol. Uh, blood viscosity, the thickness of the blood. We used to measure blood viscosity, except the company kind of went out of business. But the thicker the blood, the more prone you are to atherosclerosis. Oh. 22 minutes left, or I use 22 minutes? Oh, thank God for that. I'm ahead of schedule. Uh, blood oxidative damage. Uh, one of the, the great things I got out of this meeting was I met up with a company who I'm not associated with, so I can mention their name, Nuskin. They have a new modality to check the functional antioxidant levels, which I immediately said, I have to have that in my office. So that's very critical. I also measure uh, blood uh, antioxidants, but the functional capacity is better. Also, I happen to meet another company that's introducing an uh, instrument that can measure the advanced glycation end products, the ages. We'll get to that later, too. Uh, what about the osteoporosis connection? Well, big time. We just recently found out that women taking calcium with osteoporosis were more prone to have cardiovascular disease. So for the last hundred or so years, have those of us recommending calcium, have we been doing the wrong thing? Looks like we have, because we didn't give vitamin D and we didn't give vitamin K2 with that. And K2 uh, and D are two critical cardiovascular and diabetic nutrients. I can't get into the nutrients too much, 
but the osteoporosis heart disease connection is similar to the glucose heart disease connection. The Rotterdam study showed that those individuals with the highest K2 intake had a 57% reduction in cardiovascular disease. So now all of you treating osteoporosis should be included in your supplementation, not only calcium, and the question comes, are we giving too much, but your D3, your magnesium, and your MQ7, vitamin K2. Hormonal factors come into play. Uh, there are two other things uh, that really affect, uh, well, we'll go on, I think, I, I think the next slide. Well, I better mention them on that slide. Two other things that affect the pathophysiology are periodontal disease, very common. It, uh, it does cause accelerated atherosclerosis, inflammation, and aging. And now, and we know from hearing Dr. Sinatra yesterday, microwaves and, of course, air pollution. What are you going to do if you live in New York? You've got problems, especially in Manhattan. Uh, but new studies came out and showed that people are more prone to have a heart attack uh, after even six hours of exposure to air pollution. So it's a problem, and uh, I think we have to... Uh, and what I've tried to do is uh, get into more of environmental medicine. I have a new book coming out on that. Okay, so what do we do to re re uh, reverse these pathophysiologic elements? All of the things, inflammation, oxidized LDL, high lipids, and so forth. Lifestyle, diet, exercise, stress reduction. I had a good lecture on stress reduction. It's very critical. Dean Ornish, of course, a big part of his program was stress reduction. Nutraceuticals, I'm going to show you a few of them. Pharmacologic therapy, I use, even though I'm so-called holistic or integrative, you have to use drug therapy. I don't care where you're coming from, you have someone with congestive heart failure, someone with diabetes, a blood sugar, three or 400, you need to go to the drug therapy. So I, uh, my, pr my program is very integrative. And then, of course, invasive therapies when indicated.